Yo, Carlito, yeah. drop the beat. A boom, boom. A boom, boom. A boom, boom. <laughs> Wait, you should do this at the end, but I like no, it. No, no, no. do no. it. A boom, boom. A boom, boom. I remember a boom, boom. back when I had a boom, boom. the red, black a boom, boom. lumberjack with the hat to match. Remember rapping do the hard, the hard. You never thought that, thought that hip hop would take it this far. Boom, 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 boom. I love it. Love man. it. I love, love it. it. That was our special <laughs> guest, old John. <laughs> and so the idea is that we got we got to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of shout out going on. First of all, Skylux. Mark is thank fantastic. You. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much for making us our, our home Lux. here. Skylux Roofing. All right. This is a little break room, which is really cool. Second thing is we want to thank everybody. Our listeners are just growing on a daily basis. And we want to thank everybody for listening to the show and believing in what we have to say and what our guests have to say and what Carlito has to unfortunately say. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> but even but, more, I love that people are writing to us now and telling us yes. how they feel, what yes. they feel like we may be missing or what they'd like to talk about. So send us the messages. Keep sending them. And, and remember that we're on iTunes. We're on SoundCloud. We're on Spotify. We're on Stitcher, we're on Google Play Music, and we're at theconstructionlife.com, and we're also at hardcorerentals.com. So we're five places you can find our voice. And now we're on. We're on. So, John, <laughs> our special guest here. John. Very special guest. Introduce yeah. yourself to us, please. John Mora. I run uh, two businesses, one being Stone Throw Construction, the other being Craft and Clerk. How long have you been in construction? My whole life. My yeah. whole life, when I was old enough to lift some heavy shit... My uncles grabbed me and paid me very little money and said, this is <laughs> well, now that's your, normally the this case. This is now right? your life. <laughs> this is the your beginning life. of This it. is what you do now. <laughs> so what was the first, I guess, go to? Like, what was, it, what, what was given to you? Like, where'd you guys start building first off? My uncles were masons at the time. And, wow. Uh, I could relate. And we need a good labor. And I needed a car. I was like, I was 15. I think I, maybe the summer that I was 14, originally started in their, in their welding fab shop. I didn't gain any skills there. I just kind of stood around and got paid for it. <laughs> no, you learned some things, man. I don't know. Yeah. I think I really started to learn when I wanted some. So I wanted a car. Summer that I turned 15, I'm like, I need some money. And my Uncle Ange is like, come with me, kid. I got to gotcha. ask, <laughs> what's, what's the car? What was the car? Uh, the car that I first eventually bought was like a 96 or 98 Hyundai Excel. Oh. Black hatchback, <laughs> tinted windows. And I shit you not, the stereo system was worth more than the car. But it because was a hatchback, it, which is the most important. It most important. To be. Station wagon band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was my, that was my first car that so I eventually bought. So you get into construction, you're doing masonry, and you're working with the masons. So you're lifting a lot of stuff mm -hmm. as a kid. Oh, yeah. Are you learning the good and the bad? At that time, all bad. All of bad. Course. <laughs> Dude. Back in the day when, you know, everyone... Well, I guess you always, the bad is what you learn from. You, you should learn from the bad, right? That's right. right. So Isn't it kind of strange it that you always see the bad before you see the good? Yeah. Well, the bad's always easier to do. Uh, it's true, huh? It's faster. It's easier to it's, do. It's easy. It's what Manny always tells me, at least. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you think, dude, even at a young, even at, you know, back in the day when I was young, I'm like, this doesn't make sense. This isn't sustainable. Like, but you weren't old enough to kind of step up and no, go, hang and, on and a sec. No, nor did I care. My first couple of months on site, I'm like, you just had to point. And I'm like, I'll go do it. Yeah, fine. <laughs> fine. No love, no passion. I just hate it. I'm like, this is not what I'm going to do when I'm an old established man. What was the point of the light bulb? When, when did it go off and you started realizing, I hang think, on a sec? I think I was doing, as a laborer, I was doing more, so I was working smarter. I can see everyone around me struggling, and I'm just maybe picking it apart a little too much. It became easy to, for me. So I could, you know, do the hard shit. Everyone else was struggling, and, you know, it was easy to thrive because there was meatheads around me. Well, you know? unfortunately, that's, that's the industry. That's the industry. Right. You, need those, you need those meatheads, yeah. right? Well, yeah. those guys want to be on top of the, the hole or doing the labor i'd yeah. rather be like you i'd rather be on the tools doing the technical stuff i feel that my day is more productive and more interesting at 15 and 16 believe me i was still the meathead we all were i was just more efficient at moving heavy shit bringing brick bringing mud and out of curiosity how old are you i'm uh he's younger than us that's just the fact. i'm 37 there you go i'm 37 and what's the background don't tell me Portuguese. <laughs> no, uh, Italian, <laughs> Italian and Canadian. We'll Look say. at Manny it's Italian. not a Portuguese that, show. Not man. everyone's Portuguese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you're, you're, you're laboring. At what point did you decide, I got to go on my own? I want to do my own thing. I guess once, once I, I kind of come to terms with, hey, I'm good at this. This is, 
I make good money. I can work smarter, not harder. You know, going to that, you started a trade that's not easy. No, masonry fuck. is not easy. So I, anything I, I, after yeah. that, you're successful. You well, learn to work hard and fast at the beginning. Yeah, we were on res residential sites, so it's it's all production. It's all like put the brick in the wall, just get it done. Your foot's broken, give me the brick. You drop down, you know. It's it was just that rough. kind of mindset. It's right? rough. Yeah, it's so, rough. So I, I guess back to my question is like, at what point did you decide I don't want to continue doing this? I want to do better. So my business is now Stone's Throw Construction. It was stone's throw masonry and landscaping so you're choosing the two hardest trades why didn't you just incorporate roofing while you're at it too <laughs> I man i mean like, carly like you're talking about masonry and landscaping yeah but that was what he was taught right from yeah. the beginning that's what i know, know. But that's, yeah. so he didn't have a choice <laughs> that's yeah. two difficult trades man like hard working yeah. trades yeah. but for him it wasn't because his family was involved that that was already an established business, right? It was. I think I operate a little differently than my family, different mentality. They came from Italy and they're hungry and they just want to, the next job, the next job, the next job, and yeah. that's it. It Not, wasn't so much about customer service. No, it, it wasn't customer service. Maybe a little production. Maybe a little bit too many burn your bridges and think about the <laughs> next one. No, we've all been there. You know, uh, so yeah. I learned how I thought. It should be operated by, by doing like, not the opposite, but having a different mindset. Did you, know? you come up with that mindset on your own or were you watching or paying attention to it? Like uh, how mm. far back are we talking about now? You know, you're always thinking if I could do it, I would do it differently or I wouldn't do this. I'd do something else. And even like back in the day, I'm like, this is kind of stupid how this is. You it's question. not efficient. Yeah. You question. Reinventing the wheel is hard, right? It's hard. Yeah. It's hard. And it's sometimes it's pointless. At a certain point, I'm like, this is not how it, it's supposed to be. I think skipping forward a, a couple of years or quite a few years, I became a foreman for a landscape company specializing in like stone was, was my deal. I would run the crew. Resi and this is residential? This is all residential. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Big shout out to Green Apple Landscaping. There hey, yeah. There Dude, you go. <laughs> that company uh, changed changed my whole perspective. Peter, who is the boss, he took me under his wing and just gave me the keys to the king. I respect like, guys like I love that, that want to pass that. on the knowledge. That yeah. I, I can't stand guys who want to hide all their fucking knowledge. And but you can't operate like that. No, so man. You, can't you need to it. hand it off to somebody else. Yeah. And then you got to give it to somebody else that's actually going to take your idea and make it better. Exactly. And so on. And, and, then, so on. and then you have the evolving wheel. Exactly. You, you have. Just, I've always said that construction is like we're Neanderthals, but unfortunately, oh, so, because we're the so last true. ones to evolve. I mean, it's just yeah. a shame, but it shouldn't be that way. So you learned quite a bit from him. My base is through Peter at Green Apple, the, like the business side, we would say like, you know, there's a yin, yin and a yang. I was the building, he was the business. And together we were just killing it. It was, an, oh. it was a good run when we were there. I moved my way up to project manager and kind of got off site a little bit. And then I really got into like the meat and potatoes of a business. And this guy's like a mad scientist. You're talking about the behind the scenes. Behind the, the scenes. Timing, yeah. money, schedule. Dude, he's guys. a mad, mad scientist mad scientist. the pencil basically the pencil the of the pencil. business yeah. right thank god i did it it gave me that uh, other side of the of the ball of the wheel right? not a lot of guys know that you have to focus as much energy on that as mm. you do as building right for that's sure and critical. i think that's important that if most guys were to understand what the guy that goes through getting the job and landing it and collecting if they understood that more they would appreciate their job and be better at it also that's so true yeah. That is very true. And that can change you from a laborer to a business owner at the same time or a subcontractor, or, right? Right, or foreman or, you know, work your way up. And, and then you kind of get a, you, you see that door opens, you're like, wow, what's behind here? You yeah, know? Yeah. You, well, that's you the beautiful part about construction. There are so many doors. You just need to get that key to open the door. Well, right? you, I've always learned right. that, that you can always learn something every single day on a job site. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go in with blinders and just do the job and then get the hell out. Punch mm -hmm. the clock and get the hell out. Get in and then don't say hello to anybody. Learn. Like, why don't you just pick the brain of other guys that are working that you get along with? Figure out how they're doing it. Or maybe, yeah. the, maybe it's a stigma. Maybe it's a stigma that guys are nervous to ask these questions because they might come across as sounding stupid i have a theory that you have to be a thief you have to steal knowledge 100 percent. you have to steal it because and then say, make it your own make it your own right yeah. so so you need to be observing you need to steal knowledge if a foreman or a boss is going to come in and, and give you a task to do and maybe you don't necessarily know 100 percent how to do it he's going to give you the cole's note just enough to get the job done 
because he's not going to educate you. He has another project to go to or another task to go to. You need to kind of steal how he operates, how he's thinking, bring it into your own brain and, and make it work your own way, which is going to be different. But you have to steal that knowledge. You have to you have to watch how he operates. You have to watch how the other guys operate. You know, in the masonry industry, we all have a trowel, a hammer and a joiner. And there's five guys on the scaffolding. There's always going to be a faster guy. As long as you have those tools on your belt on you, not on the ground not 10 the feet ground. away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, you guys got a joiner? Hey, where's the pencil? Hey, man, I need a on. knife. <laughs> I got a pencil, but I need the knife. But but even more important, I mean, it's we're, we're saying really important things, but taking your time and hurrying up and coming home alive and safe mm. is the most important part. And if you're educated and you have been taught well, you'll come home safe and yeah. do another day, right? And yeah. that's the thing. It's a long game, man. I think a lot of the construction guys, short term, living check to check. I, I got to agree with you on that. Just, and unfortunately, I don't want to say the word again, but it, it's a millennial act. Like it's it's their mentality, man. How much yeah. can I make today? How much can I make this week? Yeah. How much can I make this month? Because this is what I want to fucking, I want to buy that scratch and fucking save at Friday. And then mm. you spend all that money on the weekend and then come back to work for a reason because I need the money. Because you need you the money. You can't do that that way anymore. But, yeah. but John said something really interesting. We're talking about millennials. Millennials. No, we're talking about millennials. millennials. <laughs> <laughs> um, you you grew up with older guys yeah so people places and things if you're working with older guys they're mm. they're gonna eat and work they're gonna keep going they're gonna yeah. be up early they're gonna work late so when you have competition as a youngster and everyone around you wants to be at the bar or they don't you want a, a tool right. but they don't want to know how to use the tool just want to make money. That's a big problem, right? Yeah, you're a product of your environment. Yeah, people, place, and things. And I thank God that my uncle Ange would can wake me up in the morning as a With young a kid. We, yeah, get the <laughs> fuck up. We're going get to up, work. Get up, Mason. Right. Like, he can't work without me, right? I'm the laborer. I need to make the mix. I need to get the brick up yeah, there. Yeah. So if I don't get my ass up, he doesn't get a fucking paycheck. So were you mixing a lot of sand? What do you mean? Like too much when sand were, in the when mix? Were you do, when you were doing brick and block and so on, were you oh, the everything. sand guy? Every, no, so everything. So you start on the scaffold, you just start spreading brick, spreading brick, spreading brick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get this technique to spread, you know, 16 brick at a time. Then you have some some time to relax. Oh, no, wait, there's mud. Then you got to get the mud. Yeah, it's and never then, ending. Yeah, man. so I think I was operating a, a rough terrain forklift at like 15 years old. It's wicked. You know, making, making mixes. It had a, a leveler on the forklift. It was an old ass machine and it wouldn't <laughs> level all the way. So if you're off kilter when you start, you're three feet off the fuck where you want to be on, on the, the top. Three scaffolds high. <laughs> but you compensated for that. You compensate. The bearings were shot. You know, you turn, you turn one inch one way and it just, the whole mast goes like. But John, that's over. really important. Um, on every site, you would think that if you're doing drywall, it's typical drywall. If it's a brick work it's tip you have to kind of adapt to every project yeah. it's always different you ask always have to think outside the box it's, n it's never going to be an easy job right well, there's always i've always said that there's two groups of contractors out there they're the guys that do typical and then the guys who want to do better than typical mm. that's all it is right yeah. and you can see the guys you can see the guys that want to do better and they actually care and they want to be they want to contribute yeah. And they definitely want to educate and they want to share. That's what they want to do. It's a pride thing. You got to let your pride down yeah. and say like, look, I'm the boss. This is my project, but I actually don't know how to do this. Let's figure it out. This is how, this is the steps. I may not know how to do it right now, but I'm going to break it down into like into little increments and learn how to do it. Next time, I know how to do it. You're touching on a lot of really important things. We all have done everything once the first time it's yeah. really important to say that don't be afraid of trying something or learning from someone else as long as you're getting the right information here's here's right. the question for you guys you think okay i already know the old school guys they would say fuck you this is how we've been doing it for decades yeah. this is how we're gonna no, do it yeah, dude. we are not going to evolve i'm fine with this i don't care if it's not perfect or whatever do you think it's harder to teach an old school guy or a millennial hmm. Holy I fuck. think it's hard. I think it's. There. I'll tell you the truth. I think it's really harder to teach somebody that's been in the business doing the same thing for so long. But millennials have been in the business short time. I know, but they're still sponges. Um, they still they haven't adapt. Yeah. Uh, they, they haven't had enough time to take in a lot of information to overwhelm themselves. So I feel they're still a big sponge. My, my reason behind that is that the older guys are on their way out, and some of them percentage want to teach and share this knowledge to yeah. newer guys that are coming in. 
the millennials, the younger guys are coming in and they're going to be actually changing the landscape and I've, showing yeah. how the industry is going to be. I really feel that the older guys don't want to teach anybody anything and they just want to retire and go home. I think the trick is, like you said, it's really mm. true. That's a great point. You need to steal that knowledge from the older guys. You, well, you got to read between the lines. He's got other shit to do. So he's just not- pay attention to him and just see what he's doing. And because the reality is a lot of the older guys will just do things naturally. They just don't even realize that they're doing it. Because they no one's ever taught them. Yes. And they've never taught anyone. So yes. it's it's very difficult to, to teach. And when you actually verbalize something, you could do something for a decade and never really teach someone. Once you verbalize it, whole different click in, inside your brain. It's, you understand can you imagine actually asking an old school mason like to explain to me verbally how to lay a brick <laughs> they won't know how to do it he'd, he'd they throw his, but he'd but, throw his cigarette butt yeah and they, walk away they won't, well they, yeah i think we're coming down to a really important thing we're going to get to with john soon is that time is the most important and if you don't spend your time properly and you're wasting time, you're not going to be successful, you're not going to make money, and you're going to hate your job. Mm. So you need to be really efficient. And the older guys have learned being in the trade, like myself, uh, for so long (laughs) that time is really important. Some people just drag it on, but it's important to take every second and maximize it to the fullest. Well, we, we had a guest, right? They, are, they were on board and they were millennial and they were telling us that you're already going to work. You're already there. You actually woke up. You're, you're actually around all these people that have all this knowledge. <laughs> Why not take advantage of yeah. that and learn what you can during that course of the day instead yeah. of tune yourself out and not pay attention? Back to that original question. I don't think you can classify it as, a, as an old fuck or a young, young millennial. Buck. Young buck, young buck, buck. Fuck, a young <laughs> buck, young fuck, and a young buck. It's 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 the person, man. Because I got a guy on my team, Robbie. Uh, big shout out to Robert, Robert <laughs> Innes. What up, Robert? Robbie? <laughs> Dude, he's a young buck. Was he mid twenties? He is in his mid twenties, 24, I think. He is a fucking sponge, and he is so passionate about the industry. Sometimes it doesn't make sense to me. He just he he has this passion of like. He just wants to absorb everything. Mace, well, he's in love with Mason. I call him an idiot for like to get into the business Morning. because it's why. Why is that? It's a tough business. It man. is, but it's if the young guys want to do it, I, I've seen young guys do the concrete work, man, and yeah. like forming, and, and I'm like, much respect, man. It's a tough business, and like I don't think it's sustainable. What it's do you mean? On your body, on your oh, fucking, that's another thing that we're going to be talking lungs, about. I, like, I had to roll out of bed this morning. Man. Like literally, I was like, oh god, my yeah. knees were swollen last night. I did 10 yards of concrete last night in the freezing cold, and then we had to tent it up. Ugh. I know, but the old school guys, they're still kicking it, 70, 80. They still, but are they happy? Yeah. That's a different are question. They, they could have other demons. No, I don't know what's going on there, right? I think they are happy. <laughs> it's just a, a different language. You know, right. I think every generation has their languages yeah. on the construction site or their habits of drinking or eating. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you know demons. what? Funny, our safety talk on Monday, alcohol and drug abuse on site. Wow. <laughs> because yeah, but they because don't think it's, it's becoming abuse. popular. Because it's a deal. It's a big deal. Are you seeing a lot of that on the sites? Not my sites. My my crew is pretty good. I have had guys that uh, you know are, are smoking, whether they're smoking in front of you or, or behind you. You know they're drinking. Some guys, a lot of the sub trades come to site 8 a.m. reeking a booze. And you're thinking, did this guy just go hard last night? Or yeah, did he, he wake he's straight up this morning, but he's actually more drunk. Did he wake up and have a couple of fucking beers on his way over? That's scary, man. Well, it is scary. Yeah. What's, what's more scary is that it's selfish. I think you should enjoy your life, work hard, you know, play hard. But when you're putting someone else's safety, coming to work drunk or high, great for you if you're working on your own. That's your safety. It takes but one when you're misstep. dealing with somebody else around you. <clears throat> yeah. Leave it at home, man. No, I agree. I agree. And everything and thankfully, went quiet there. I thankfully, <laughs> thankfully, I haven't had a real problem. A couple of guys, like a handful of guys throughout the, throughout the years, you know they're smoking. And you know they smoke like on their way in. Maybe you don't see them, right? You know they're high as fuck when they come into the job site yeah. at 730 in the morning. And you know they're like, oh, I'm going to go grab a coffee. Come back with where his fuck sunglasses all day, <laughs> you know, in the house. <laughs> but, you know, he didn't. He, Maybe so, they like Corey Hart. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, so he's not smoking in front of me. You, you kind of have a feeling he's doing it, but the fucking guy's good. He hasn't hurt anyone yet. Uh, that's How the am I going to prove yet. it? That's How am I going to prove it? I know, that he, but that that's high? the thing yet, right? So it's like 
that's a whole other talk. I mean, we know that it's part of the industry. It's yeah. shitty that's part of the industry. But these guys are coming into the job site, and I agree with you, Carlito, about what if something does happen and they're responsible for it now? So someone else gets yeah. hurt, or even worse, you know, and then they're responsible for that. So the, the, the reality is that if you go to okay, if you would have a job at any other place, you wouldn't do this shit. Well, well, the majority. People, you I don't want to. Do. I don't want to work with drunk guys. I don't yeah. want to work with guys that smoke. This is my personal opinion, of course. I don't like guys blowing cigarette smoke in my face while we're working. Oh, that's, that's I want terrible. oxygen. I don't want your dirty smoke and your yeah. breath mixed but, but into the it. Cigars are okay, right? Off uh, on break. I'm I'm break. Break. I know. There's a break period. I completely do agree. what you want, but we're working, and I can't breathe, and I'm holding something heavy, or it's I'm already doing dusty. Yeah. It's already, you know, there's already dust in the air. Maybe you're, if you're a mason, you're in the tarps with propane. You know, the, maybe the the salamander's leaking a little bit, so there's a little bit of propane fumes in there. Then there's dust. Then you got a couple of guys smoking. It's like uh, it's not. It's it's, 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 a, it's a it's a bad man. You I, sound yeah. like you're very aware of safety. One of the first things you said in the morning was you said to me, Manny. That we needed our protection yeah, for our yeah, APB. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. and I've, me- I've heard you mention it already a few times, which makes me feel that you're very aware of keeping or very conscious of keeping yeah. a safe job site. You have to. And that, have to. that also keeps a lot of money in your pocket because he's not going to get charged, sued, and so on. Well, right? you, you, like, look, you have to play by the rules. And the rules are changing sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. But you have to, you have to roll with the punches. Yeah. This is the industry now. And it's going to evolve. Just like, you know, we say you have to evolve and roll with the punches on site. Bro, you have to keep the same mindset for your business. Yeah. And if the industry is going a certain way, you have to follow it. You have to make well, sure. Well, customers see that. Clients see that. Right. But right. potential big businesses see that. The biggest problem for me growing up was people not trying to teach me. So, like, say, for example, there was Northwood HVAC. When I would come around in the blog, <laughs> well, they're not in business anymore. But oh, they're not. No, Is, did, did um, you actually work for them? Well, no, they worked by me. They were my HVAC uh, guys. Okay. Uh, at that time, I felt that I needed to understand their job to do my job better. Like my right. framing, uh, I had to stay a certain amount away. You know, drywall so it doesn't reverberate and so on. Whenever the bosses would leave, I'd come over and I'd say to the guys, "Hey, man, what are you doing over here? What's up?" I would always try to get yeah. knowledge because I knew I was going to go somewhere or do something more in my life because I. I enjoyed what I was doing. The boss would always come back and say, "Don't teach him anything; he'll do it himself." Oh, God. <laughs> but now we have a whole different ball game. Now we have a problem with getting people to work, staying at work, not being high or drunk. It's it's not that good I, to I hear. I think you know? a lot of it has to do with. Uh, it goes back to that dumb comment that I made, where I think guys are uh, are are insecure that they don't want to ask questions to think. So yeah. then people will think I'm stupid. Okay, I'm really good at two industries and I came from two different industries, construction and production as well. And those are the two things in my life that I have always stood in the front of the class and I always asked as many questions because I wanted to learn more. That yeah. was just the bottom line. You got to find your passion of what you want to do and ask as many questions. So these young guys, they can't be afraid to ask. And, Not and, all of them. No, no, Not but I mean, them, the old but... school guys and you know, like you can ask them, but you got to kind of feel them out. You got to figure out, like we you said, have to, you have to know how they, they operate. They won't want to teach you but yeah. they will teach you if yeah. you pay attention. That's right. It's just a different way of teaching. That's all yeah. it is. And that's how I learned. I look at old, I really, when I see an older guy on the job site, I pay attention to him. I try to figure out where his weak spots are, where the chinks are. You know what I yeah. mean? The yeah. kinks yeah. in yeah. the armor are, right? And then try to be nice about it. And then in and around about way, ask those questions that I want to get answered. Because yeah. those are the questions that you can't Google. That's no. just a fact, right? Mm-mm. You need to be on the job site. You need to be doing the work. You need to be in that environment and you need to figure out. That's why I respect trades that all get along and they want to say yeah. hello and they want to talk. And I like seeing tile guys ask trim guys questions and vice versa. So it's yeah. the same thing. We should all just be asking those questions and then you take it and you make it your own. Don't yeah. copy it. And there's 20 different ways of doing it, right? Completely. It's, completely. Nobody's oh, the sure. right, nobody does it the right way there's no right answer. everyone has a no. someone uses a right hand someone uses a left hand some guys don't use hands <laughs> um when i see somebody thinking outside the job and doing more i know that that's the potential of a manager okay. uh, a next supervisor or foreman i think a lot of employees don't realize that even though we're running a business we're paying attention to their character what's happening at Always. home like when i look at a guy i'm like did he get laid last night you know. If, oh, he didn't. I could tell how miserable he is. You know. You know what I mean? Or was he drinking all night? Why is he sleeping on the job? Or yeah. you, It shows on a personality that stress or trauma at home yeah. comes to work. As a good business owner, 
what they don't understand is we're paying we're paying attention to everything and every move that they're doing from the time that they show up. So, so how many years have you been? Did you do? Are you you're still doing masonry and, and landscaping, but you got so into construction now? I'm steering the business more towards like general construction. Um, is that because the, the masonry and the landscaping work is just taking a toll on the body? It's a little bit of everything, right? It's the perfect storm. And, and I think the business is, was, was mostly uh, high-end landscaping, like hardscaping, uh, a lot of custom stonework, which is great. I think you know, our, our clientele came up and then you know, in the wintertime, oh, we need a tile, we need something done here, we need this and that. Our guys are so skilled. We've been, you know, we've been in the business renovating for a while now. It just seemed like a good transition. And we've, uh, we've been doing that. Dude, fuck <laughs> Nobody loves slow. <laughs> Listen, like, nobody. Because you're driving and sleeping. <laughs> it's, it's such a, it's, it's a necessity, but it's such a crazy industry. Yeah. And, and we, did, we got out of it last year. Oh, we learned a lot from, from John. Uh, another John. That's funny enough. Yeah. Like, I listen to that podcast. Yeah. The whole yeah, insurance bullshit, right? Oh, dude, it's crazy. Well, that's stupid. You know, I, I, I like where you're going with the construction but it's so much more interesting now with the tools that we have. You know, we had to make our own tools, weld yeah. up our own tools, put a couple of pieces of wood together, make it work. Yeah. Now there's so much product to make there's your clamps, your job so cups easy. for the industry. Yeah. There's yeah. like the yeah. zoom booms now yeah. that are just ridiculous for you know it, every every aspect of the of the industry is getting better and easier. And there's and there's niche tools that were like. You know the tile industry, like the large format shit. Oh, it's insane! Now. Okay, here, here it here it comes. I'm gonna do it before Manny. What? what? What's <laughs> your go-to tool on your site? <laughs> um, so what color? What so, color so are listen, we? So listen, we're we're very diverse, right? So pick a trade. Pick a trade. Okay, uh, so if you're doing masonry, you're doing brickwork. What what's the majority? Yeah, like a, you know, a, a rose <laughs> trowel is is a necessity. Yeah, of course. Right? Maybe you don't. The, no, no, they're, they're my favorites. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, but we have a little bit of everything. Everything. I still have my my rigid uh, combo kit that I started with. Wow! Oh, I gave up on that because the batteries just kept on dying. Listen, man. I had to use. I had to go back to my rigid because we had two sites. I went back to my <laughs> rigid, and with a good battery, the rigid tools aren't too bad. Mm. But listen, the uh, good thing is nobody steals rigid. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So true. <laughs> nobody steals rigid. But, so the landscaping guys, what are they using? Uh, like landscaping, it's more like the equipment. It's all. It's the all the equipment. big boys. Yeah. the big toys, right? Yeah, it's yeah. the big guys. So Kids, like steers, we're we're, we're Bobcat masonry with Rose Sigma for tiles. We're Milwaukee for cordless and and power tools. He does have a bit bit of everything. Dude, huh? we're we're so diverse. Like, yeah. uh, what's our, your favorite though? This is a personal opinion. I do like the Milwaukee, but then coming from a masonry or commercial background, it's Hilti. Yeah. The shit, dude. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I never said Hilti's bad. I'm I just know, you, saying. You never did. I'm just saying. Listen, none of them are bad as long as they're making you money and they work. It's very true. And their warranty is good that you they're, can get it replaced when it breaks down. They're as good as yeah. the trade but person that's using it. If I'm an old school guy. I like cords. I, really? I, I yeah, I you're, still like the you're gonna power. change that opinion soon, man. Oh my god, the next I still year like the core power. Change you are a Neanderthal. Well, yeah. you know what? You get so busy, you get so busy, and your He's guys not sitting are so down busy. right now. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to charge the batteries often enough. Dude, a 9 amp battery will last you all day. Try, try, Bosch. You, you should start the working on my amp. site, it's gonna burn out fast. Why? Because it's cold, or because well, yeah, and we're just working. So, like, 10 guys are using one tool to sharing it, you know. Some you guys get more tools, I know. Yeah, no, I know. Some, sometimes <laughs> I know. the guys leave them in the car, it's easier. People walking by, not stealing stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we got a, we got a lot of people looking over the fences going. What is this? Oh, what's and I'm like, hey, man, that? pull that away 10 feet away from yeah. that fence. <laughs> <laughs> leave, Jumping leave, distance. Leave the rigid. Leave the rigid. <laughs> <laughs> Take, actually, but I, I, I still love hey, the rigid vacuum. I, I was just about the to say. The rigid shop vacuum. Yeah, right? I is still have mine. You can get a Festool badass $1,400 vacuum. The $99 vacuum from, from uh, Home Depot. Will suck anything. Water, will suck mud, a, a, concrete, a rat, a rat <laughs> this big, you know? <laughs> okay, I want to hear this story. Someone sucked it, up a rat. I want to hear worked. this. Well, I was, at, I was at Atlas one day, and I needed, uh, what did I need? I needed something to attach to the chop saw, 
right? Because I have that the multi system where you, you hit the power for the chop saw, it turns on the vacuum. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Which is I fucking usually go to Lee Valley for that one. Life yeah. life changing. I'm looking for this in Atlas, and the guy is trying to sell me on this vacuum, this Fest tool, and then you know the Bosch vacuum and all this shit. Look, bud. <laughs> You can't suck a fucking mouse up with a stupid inch and an eight fourteen hundred dollar HEPA filter vacuum. A mouse. Right? Because it's so like, true. The rigids, you can you can put them through their through their paces. You can suck up a mouse, a fucking half a piece of trim if you want. It's you true. shake the hose, it's it'll go true. in. Oh, I'm on their page. So I have a Hilti vacuum for my concrete drilling, coring, cutting. Yeah. I got my Festool for my drywall, sanding, you know, the, oh, the shit. You spend a lot of but, money too. That's why you only have one on site. No, no, I ha- <laughs> but I have five rigid vacuums. Those stay on site and I double hose them and they do yeah. everything. Yeah, and I yeah. try to kill these things, they're still running. Big shout out to rigid. Yeah. <laughs> Fun. I got nothing against rigid. I still have that vacuum. I don't either. I, that's all I'm, I have. I'm but serious. You know what? I think I think if you pick a color, if you pick red, if you pick yellow, if you pick, every tool is better the next year, right? So one year DeWalt may have the kick-ass impact. The next year uh, Makita might have the best saw. And and it goes it's a revolving Come on, let's let's revol- keep it realistic. Window, man. Makita will always have the best saw. <laughs> <laughs> He's Croatian, so he's. And got by it. the way, I know he's why you like Rigid. To say that because Rigid is owned by Milwaukee. Is and it? Yeah. What? No way. Yeah. Well, I bought it because the entry level tools. When I first started, you know, you you don't buy the Hilti yet in the beginning. But listen, that because they're stupid expensive. That, go straight to it, baby. That original <laughs> that original combo kit that I bought that I've added to is still kicking, man. I gave it and away. We beat the shit oh, out. I'm not even lying kept on driving to me crazy. I have over a. 20 year old dewalt case that holds like eight tools in it yeah and i will not get rid of it it is going to go in an archive i'm going to epoxy (laughs) it into a wall when people walk by they're going to be like what is that i'm going to be like it's history that's That's the future (laughs) that's hand solo (laughs) but listen dewalt DeWalt has the right idea with making their cases bigger and rigid bigger and ri- right and then you know you can fit your tool plus 10 other things in the case yep. right your accessories your accessories but every other i like, hate i know bags. milwaukee is the same thing when they have like a molded case for that tool in particular yeah if it happens to be modified in any way it's not going to fit i find dewalt is like you can put whatever in there okay i gotta be the only one saying bosh Oh, no, listen, I had a great, uh, we, I went to work at Manny's, one of Manny's sites. He wouldn't let me bring a tool, and he's like, you're using Bosch. No, no, it's not I wouldn't let you. I just said, he don't wanted worry me to go about through bringing this, your the tools. Feel and There's the a bunch of tools yeah. on site, yeah. so you can use them. If they yeah. happen to be blue, then they, they're blue. No, but he also wanted me to try them to see my opinion on them. Yeah. I enjoyed them. I had, there was no failure in it. It's just mindset. Yeah. I was grown up on DeWalt. We all agree that and all the brands Hilti. make a good yes, tool, including sure. Rigid. Include, but we're having all, fun with all this, Of course, right? totally. You know, uh, actually, we're, we're at the trim phase of one of our projects now, and I started pulling out all the trim gear, so my table saw, chop saw, track saw, all that shit's all DeWalt. But I'm not a DeWalt guy. Either they have great sales and I just pick them up over the years. Like, well, it's that important. It, they I are. They're, they're affordable. I, I have no idea. But I, I guess I'm a DeWalt guy now because all my trim shit or woodwork and stuff is DeWalt. So yeah, I'm a Makita guy when it comes to woodwork. Just we, 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 know, we know what kind of guy I am. Oh, yeah. He's Bosch. Bosch. This guy is Bosch. loyal to Bosch because he loves Bosch. Uh, it's such a Portuguese No, thing. it came from the very beginning. My dad had Bosch. He handed it down to me. Uh, I was okay. using green Bosch at the time. That's when it was green. Uh-huh. And then it, it, just, it just became the go-to brand. I just always used Bosch. That's all. Yeah, my wife gave me blue one time, and I never went back. <laughs> oh, sorry. Wrong show. <laughs> Let's get back on track. Okay. So, uh, how many years have you been in business now? Stone Throw is, well, different iterations of Stone Throw is, is next year's or 10th year anniversary oh wow a decade wow. Huh? a decade we wow made it to a fucking decade and so now we what i'm excited about now is i want you to tell us about the new venture that you guys are doing mm. and this is really important and at what point did you see that this needed to be done you know honestly right from the beginning having that background with peter yes this is how he operates but it's like that that fest tool that hilti in the beginning you feel like it's not attainable in the beginning let me just do it myself we cook it old school just get up and running unfortunately once you get up and running 
you're like a hamster in a wheel and you just keep doing it and then you have this project that you got to finish and you don't have time to grow your business on the back end of things you don't have time to change your systems it's this machine that you've created and all of a sudden you're stuck with it you just got to feed it diesel and grease and two by fours and and just keep going and going and going right off the jump i knew that i wasn't operating optimal right like I, i knew i had both sides i had the shitty side uh, this is how you run your business, the, the, the meathead way or the smart way. I've seen and lived both sides. I was somewhere in the middle. Well, you learn from it. That's the most important part, not continuing the way you were going. Right. Yeah. And, you know, in the back of my head, I'm thinking this year's going to be different. This year's going to be different. And then the winter would come around and things would die down. And the then, year's come and gone. And then the year's come and gone. And like, I got, the, I got to start the job in the spring. And then you're like, you, you have no time. And then it's that that hamster wheel again so i've been stuck and at 10 years i'm thinking like why am i still operating the same way all of a sudden it's a decade later and i'm stuck in this yeah you need to adapt i I need to adapt you're not the only one my business everybody's doing it that way right right? i really it's been in the back of my head the past couple of years it's evolved quite a bit you know i think i'm still gonna use these evolution sides of things but right now what we have is a business called craft and clerk craft being us the builders you know the definition of craft is to build something by hand clerk the definition of clerk is uh clerical work administration you know that stuff so the business is called craft and clerk and we are geared to manage the back offices of contractors. We're geared for contractors. What's the typical contractor do? Like, are we, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, like, cause I'm, I'm accused He's of that He's playing stupid too. right now. No, I'm just saying that the typical contractor is basically you buy something, you start collecting all these receipts, you mm-hmm. start throwing them wherever they fit in the van or yeah. the pickup truck or your toolbox. And then at the end of the week or the end of the month or the end of the job, end, you of, just, the year. end of the year, scary yeah. enough, yeah. you just compile all these receipts and put them in a frigging grocery bag. And all of a sudden, like, what the fuck am I supposed to and do? And then your this? poor accountant's like, uh, let me figure and, this out well at the end you pay for it Dude, and i think you said real. it right from the beginning most people think that when they start a business they can save themselves money if you educate yourself or train yourself to spend that money at the beginning that will be the process from there on in and It'll, you won't lose out in the long run and you won't skip a beat and yeah. you'll be on time and schedule isn't it yeah. fascinating though that the guys will spend the time and the effort and the money on buying certain tools they'll mm. prove it yep but when it comes to actually operating a business, they'll question it. It's like being a contractor and you have this project. Your background is project management or framing, whatever. You can't do that whole build yourself. You're going to nope. sub it out to people who are professionals and do it properly, right? So you're going to sub out your plumbing. You're going to sub out your electrical. You're going to sub out the things that you're not good at. Do you think any contractor is good at, at balancing the books? No, of course not. No, you're, you're, you're so the, right. Like, dude. We're getting like back to meatheads. We're meatheads. We're yeah. good at building cool shit is what we're good at. We're not good at... <laughs> He's catching up to you. Manny's three for three, Funny but phone. you're getting two to three already. <laughs> that was not my phone. <laughs> Someone likes vibrations. <laughs> at least I turned it down. I turned the ringer off. It must be the Mason. <laughs> <laughs> so back, back to meatheads. Back to meatheads. We're subbing out the work that we don't know how to do or we're not good at or where it makes sense to spend the money where it makes sense to spend the money and in this scenario you have to think of your books your administration think of it as like someone who is professional knows what they're doing can handle that aspect of it because quite frankly you can't you don't have the time and you have the knowledge and this goes back to guys will spend the money on a brand new van brand new Mm -hmm. decals they'll spend time and effort on a a specific kind of business card yeah just the whole branding this keeps on going back to the image of their company yeah but yet they'll neglect the paperwork side right so john i need you to kind of walk us through so i'm a contractor Mm -hmm. i'm excited about this i'm i'm like i don't know what the hell's going on i I just know that i got stacks stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks and stacks of fucking receipts and invoices and labor shots and all this other shit what do you guys do like what are you guys offering now with this this whole craft and clerk thing we offer a huge array of services bookkeeping being one of them that's major daily and weekly bookkeeping you can chip away 15 minutes a day it's not crazy you leave it a week you're at uh, an hour and a half you leave it a couple of weeks it gets exponentially worse it gets worse and worse and worse you leave it a month not only that but like I'm that typical guy for 
20 years that you're talking about, I would have receipts in a garbage bag yeah. in the front of my van and the heat yeah. from the motor would smoke the ink. And half and the nothing. time it was a $2,000 receipt I need to write off and like 500 for HST. And I'm like, shit, there's it's nothing gone. on there. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. gone. This business is all online. We're in the cloud. We're all web-based. And we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not selling you a software that this is going to change your life. It's and not an app or it's anything. Not a, it's not an app. We're very transparent in the sense that we're just really good at using existing software and existing programs. And we're putting it all together. That's it. So we're doing what you should be doing at you know 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock at night when you don't want to do it. We're doing it during the day, and we're good at it. That's the key. We're efficient. We can get more work done. We offer bookkeeping, and it's daily bookkeeping. With QuickBooks, man, you take a picture of the receipt. It goes to your, your QuickBooks account. Kate's in the back office. She's reconciling. She's putting it where it's supposed to be. So at the, at, at the end of the QuickBooks year. I use QuickBooks for a long time. QuickBooks Online is amazing, yeah. man. There's so many good, easy, intuitive programs. So it's not like you're handing a, handing Craft and Clerk the keys to the kingdom and you don't know what magic is going on. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. A lot of people are afraid of uh, scared having that information given to someone, right? right? Their, their pride, right? They, they think like, this is my business. This is my babe. I'm giving them the keys to the kingdom. But we can see your bank account we don't have access to buy a trip or whatever we're looking it's 100% at what you're spending secure. it's 100 percent balancing out the numbers you're bringing in an invoice you're spending dribs and drabs of materials and labor and we're just putting it in the right spot so that at the end of the year your accountant can can have a spreadsheet and have your reconciled books and you're not going to pay two thousand bucks or 150 an hour for your account to go through all of your receipts and kind of reconcile everything. I, or, I remember. Or, sorry, uh, sorry. I, I remember. I used to do it like once a month, and it would actually take me a full day. Sometimes trickle over to another day to actually organize all and, this shit. And, and in your head, and everyone listening right now, what's your daily rate? <laughs> to do oh that, my god! I, I, what's what's your, your, what's so your daily rate? Exactly. It should you, it should be between two hundred fifty and five hundred bucks a day just for a laborer. Yeah. Not including the company making some money and paying WSIB and so on, exactly. HST in the works. What's your daily rate? What's your right? what are you worth? Put that put that down there, man. And and what's what's spending time with your family worth? Uh, Priceless. fucking off on a sailboat. What's going Having for a divorce. ride on your dirt bike? What Having a what? <laughs> That's really expensive. No, but well. that leads that leads that time that you're talking about that's so important with your family and being on a boat and enjoying friends and going right. out for dinner. That's what gives you a divorce in the long run. How much will that cost? <laughs> How much is that it's cheaper to keep her? I yeah, thought well, you, and, I and thought you not, said a horse. It, no, no. I no, you can ride your horse. horse. To you can ride a horse, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you can ride a horse. He's he's still listening to that song they went to that nightclub. Ride the horse, that <laughs> like fucking song. Oh my god. <laughs> no, uh, but for me, it's even like your strike. Like you're hitting all the red, uh, the green lights for me right now. They're popping off for me at the end of the year. Is chaos. Trying to get the receipts you're missing. Trying to go to the bank to get the statements. Everyone's calling you. CRA's trying to collect money. Like, yeah. It's just do, chaos. Do you, John, do you know what percentage of contractors are like that, that mess? I let my guard down and I start asking people how they handle their books. What's their process? I'm like... How do they yeah. react when you ask that question? They're, they're defensive. Like I'm asking them what kind of porn they're watching. Really? Because they, I'll tell you. Because, yeah, I know you would. <laughs> I love so, sprinklers. But, but it's, it's like this, this forbidden thing that you're not supposed to talk about, right? It's like... I, my it's book. taboo. What do you mean? It's my, completely my taboo. I know. Why do you want to know? What are you CRA? What's going on? <laughs> no, it's true. That's how they look at you. Yeah. Right. So but they're not thinking. Hang on a sec. This guy might actually give me some valuable advice. Right. It goes both ways. You know, I start asking guys, and like, I, I don't. They're like, what do you mean you don't? So how or, do you how do you do it? I I, I just I just go to the next site. <laughs> Just, well, they I just, just think everything's gonna you know pan out at the very end. Right. But it's not the fifteenth of every month. If you have employees, your payroll remittances due. Everyone listening right now, what's the date? Today's the, the 15th. 15th. just passed. 17th? No, 17th. Ask yourself, did you pay your payroll remittance on the 15th? Everyone listening right now, look at your boss. They did Ask him. Majority if he, didn't. He did not. He, he knows it has to be done. 
He did not. The because next, Peter's paying John. Because the, the, the site's closing, uh, we got to get the trim done, or we got to put this last course of brick on the wall, oh, or we, I got to stop at Home Depot and get two by sixes for tomorrow. Or because I use that money from, for another job. That I got to wait for that deposit to come in from the next job or the progress payment. Horrible. This is how we are all operating. Listen, I hope this sounds, it sounds so true to everyone out there. It is. I guarantee you it is. It's how everyone operates. But you, you don't have to. You don't have to do that. You have to relook at your business as, you know, you have to sub out that shit, the shit that you're not good at or the shit you don't want to do. If you're doing a job, are you going to do the demo? No, you're going to sub it out. No, I stopped doing demo way, way early on because I didn't want to get hurt. I felt that if I got hurt, back to you, what are you worth? I'm mm. the GC. If I get hurt, then that's a major deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I ra- and not saying that demo guys get hurt all the time. There's the potential of being hurt. Yeah. So you, you got a very good point that subbing it out, including this, this is really critical that you should also be subbing this out. Just get over the insecurity of you letting someone else into your business, but yeah. you're letting them into your business to find out where it's wrong and with the business. It, but Manny, help. I think where the problem is, is that with every everything and anything in this industry the information isn't in people's faces so people that are listening to the podcast are going to have an opportunity now Mm. to hear what you're saying they never had that avenue or that idea to allow somebody to make their life easier and faster and more efficient by them passing it on to you it's done professionally i have to say that the day-to-day operations for craft and clerk it's not you no i'm a meathead you started this correct okay sounds more like a brain surgeon well, not a meathead <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about that when, when i when i'm on the clock with craft and clerk i'm involved in marketing i'm involved in this is my problem 10 years in the business this is the problem that i have let's solve all it. the same problems let's, let's implement it is solving my problem will solve everyone else's problem. You're so down right. Line. This is my problem. This is what I want to be perfect. My bookkeeping. I want to have my books reconciled on a weekly basis. I want to. I want to know where my projects are, labor to material wise. I want to know all this shit. I don't want to sit down and, and punch the numbers. Right now, it's very impromptu, and I want to keep it this way in the sense that I text Kate a bunch of chicken scratch could be on a two by four. I text her a picture. Can you make a spreadsheet of this so I can present to my it's client? Simple. You, no, it's not simple. Seriously. So, so you can get a contractor on the job site and it's rolling around in their head. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden they do chicken scratches on a piece of two by four, take a picture of it, send it to you guys, yeah. and they'll actually input it and put it all together and start building it based on that project. And you can have as many projects on the go. That's that easy. It's that, that's, that's what you guys do. It's so on their easy. bookkeeping side, right? So what else you guys, on their bookkeeping, you're also doing a bunch of other stuff too. On the 15th of every month, payroll remittance. That's a huge thing, okay? And if you try to go to the uh, the CRA website and figure out uh, Good luck. how to remit, Good luck. And <laughs> you, you'll shoot yourself in the head yeah. because it's And it's you don't even want to speak to them because they're so against you and they don't even want to work with you. They just want to like, fight you. They're like coyotes. No, you know, no. When they pick up like, the phone, like, oh, yeah, yeah, I got a new one. Come on. Yeah, what do you got? Give me your true, name. Give me your man. social insurance <laughs> number. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the C and CRA doesn't stand for Canadian, man. <laughs> it's coyote. coyote. They're brutal. <laughs> They're brutal, man. I hate them. Right. Well, well, Wait, hang on. A second. No, no, no. We like the CRA. We like the CRA. No, no. A you lot. like the CRA. No, no. We like the CRA. We no, like the I CRA. Hate them. They're our friends. <laughs> big shout out to the Just CRA. Big shout out to the CRA. No. Yeah. I, okay. Here's the, the shout Canadian out to CRA. Revenue Services. Treat people like humans, and they may <laughs> work Carlito, with you. Do you realize what you're saying? <laughs> yes, I do. We gotta edit this shit real good, man. Real good. <laughs> I'm not scared. I like the CRA. <laughs> Manny, thank you. I too like the John. CRA. You right. like to see her. He can fuck off because <laughs> I, he doesn't like, I like the those CRA. Italians standing around the corner there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to reality. Back to reality. <laughs> Uh, I noticed that WSIB, so for American listeners that basically are right. our insurance, right? Our, yeah. our work, workplace safety, right? That's Correct. what it basically is. So you guys handle that. We do. Because if you want... So important. It's so important. If you don't have any, a valid e-clearance and you're working with a valid contractor, they're not going to pay you. They'll let you do the work. They're going to hold your progress payment. They're going to hold your final payment. Because they're um, allowed to do that. Because they're allowed to. They're going to they're gonna bend the rules a little bit and allow you to work with an invalid e-clearance. What they're going to do is not pay you until your e-clearance is valid, which is smart if you're not playing smart why can't they be playing smart they get the job done hopefully nothing happens they're playing a risk 
but they're not going to pay you until your e-clearance is is green. But you're also talking about people that are running a business properly. Like there's a lot of people that don't do what you're saying and they should be. Right. And that's, well, that's the what we're, try, we're trying to yeah. get to that, right? That's right. So we're, I, we're trying I, to get to, we're trying to change the industry, just like it's changing with safety, with PPE, with WSIB. Right. You know, you see all these guys wearing muffs and, and eye protection now. John's also a safety rep for Toronto. I do enjoy safety. <laughs> the safety board, WSIB, if they ever come to my site, I'm a big fan. Big fan. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing a harness right now. <laughs> with harness, tied up to the table. Yes, and safety shoes. <laughs> with, it's that kind with of podcast. A, with a six-inch six uh, <laughs> lanyard. lanyard. <laughs> Uh, you, well, tell me what's financial reporting. Financial reports is just that. We know, you know, if you do your your quote through QuickBooks, like a lot of guys do, or an invoice yeah. through QuickBooks, we have your payroll as well. So we know what hours have been inputted into a certain job. We use right now, we're going to be using T-Sheets, which is attached to QuickBooks. Right now we're using another app that's not really working out for us. So we're going to switch to T-Sheets. So your employees are going to clock in and clock out. We're going to know where you are going to know where that employee clocked in and clocked out. If they go to one site 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., have their lunch, go to another site in the afternoon, they're going to change their location. So all of these hours are countable, and we know how many hours have been put into whatever, name, name the project. But how right. is that information given to you guys? It's through T-Sheets. It's through T-Sheets. Okay, so, so, the, so the general contractor has to log in and then submit it to you guys through that. So every employee, uh, no, it goes oh. right to us. Every employee and every business has their own account. I got a quick question. A lot of the best trades I know out there are not educated. They've been just passed on, hands-on yeah. information, mm -hmm. not well-educated, always worked on the field, mm -hmm. and just never... They're afraid of technology. They're afraid of paperwork. That's true. They're afraid of taking courses. How do you make it easy for someone listening that is scared of education and they don't like talking about it out loud? They don't feel comfortable with doing paperwork. They're not good at this. How do you make their life easier? We dumb it down in the sense that you can send a picture of your chicken scratch. We'll put it into your employee file or we can put it into your file in the cloud. You don't really have to... So you don't have to be afraid anymore. You don't have to be a afraid. A lot of times, this, this was scary yeah. to do accounting or this kind of work, like get, to so get someone else to do this work yeah. for you. If you have a problem, we're Canadian business. We're not bringing it out to another country. We're real people in the office. So you can call Kate. You can call Juliana. You can say like, I, need, I know I need to do this. I got your email. What do I have to do? Just give us a call. But we'll as a GC, are my employees going to be, uh, are they going to log in? Are they going to do all this stuff? Is that what's going to happen? You have to implement it. Okay. Okay, boys. This is our new system. This is what we're rolling with. Everyone download the app. Everyone clock in and clock out. As a manager, if someone forgets to clock in and clock out, because it's it's new to them, it needs to be... It needs to habit. be habit, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in yeah. the beginning, yeah, you're going to be amending their hours like, man, yeah, I forgot to clock out. I left at 3.30. Fix that for me. Or you can text Kate. Steve forgot to sign out. He was done at 3, so and so and so. And we can do it on our end. Now, all of that is attached to payroll. We take care of your payroll. You don't have to pay a payroll service. We do it all through QuickBooks. If an employee leaves, we'll produce an ROE for you. All of these wow. things. All of these things that you need to do. So if someone you gets hurt, to. if someone gets <clears throat> sick, someone leaves the job site, it's all recorded, it's all put in there. Yeah, exactly. It is a lot of information and services that we do provide. But one of the big things is for the, for the contractors out there who are actually paying for the service to justify the price just by having a wrongful dismissal in the industry is huge. If it happens to be your lower end guy that is fired for any reason or let go, we'll say that employee can go to a labor lawyer. The labor lawyer is going to do his thing. That employee doesn't need to do anything and you can get sued for wrongful dismissal if your eggs aren't all in a basket, if you're wow. not. So this eggs. prevents that. It does. It does because we have. Well, it, no, it prepares you. It this is like a journal. You. It readies you. Yeah. It readies you. So yeah. we have employee profiles with all of their information. If someone Sick is days. smoking weed and, and you don't know, right? You think, you know, okay, this guy looks like he's high. It's July 3rd. We were on 36 wow. column. You just put it there. And you're hopefully just, you're just this making is notes brilliant. Of all you have to do is text Kate. Give Kate a call. If it, The guy can be right beside you. Text Kate. Steve is high again. Uh, and he backed his truck up into uh, into the wall. Wow! It takes account of you know when 
when it happened, what it was, and hopefully you don't ever have to use it. But if he happens to call a an employment and lawyer and you you get uh, you know they're also like coyotes, this is so brilliant. Right? You have an account. Say okay, maybe I didn't give him his three official warnings. However, he has this track record and the last thing he did was serious enough that we had to let him go. Yeah. So just as a business owner, you're covering your ass. And I've always said, like Carly knows, this, I've always said this, is that you always got to go in thinking that your client could turn into the worst the client. The worst client, yeah. Right? So you, it's not that saying that they will, but it's the same thing with employees. Your employees can turn into your worst employees. Exactly. And then what's the point of you... Listen, we're not huge millionaire, you know, money people. We're not massive. It's just like, yeah, there's some guys that have been in the construction industry that have built huge empires that are out there, which are great. But the majority of us are small mom and pop shops and we have small businesses. And one little thing like that, like a wrongful dismissal Mm -hmm. can shut you down, shut you out of the business. And all of a sudden you're doing something else. You're basically not doing what you love. And just because things weren't lined up properly, just because the paperwork wasn't done properly. It wasn't necessarily your fault. Maybe and you it don't wasn't have necessarily a your form, fault. A form 100 filled out for your uh, subcontractors and something happens on their end. Maybe they didn't have the Erie clearance. Maybe because you didn't check. You didn't have the time. Yep. So you guys will also educate the GCs that come at you or anybody that wants to operate their businesses with. Yes. You'll educate them going, okay, we start at bookkeeping. We start at that scan picture, send you a text or what have you. But then we're also going to be helping you with your your safety certificates, your your employee certificates, all that stuff. Your Your day-to-day. Day-to-day. Your Your day-to-day and how to operate a business. So you guys are a talking voice on your shoulders, basically. We're that nagging voice. Got it. So, hey. Listen, it's the 15th of the month. It's quarterly. WSIB is due. We can see that you have a couple of invoices that are pending. We're going to send a, a little poke to your clients because on the 15th, it happens that, you know, your your e-clearance wow. is, co- is coming through your quarterly. You have payroll coming up. Your truck payment is now. You need to get some money in the bank. You know what? I love this because people need reminders. Accountants don't give you reminders until it's payday or until it's the end of the season. Or something bounces. So this is really important to get a reminder. Like most people are so preoccupied with what they how they think they're going to make money that they're not really making money. Well, you're losing money yeah. because you're, you're, you're operating reactive rather than proactive. I know that you're saying most of this is online. Do you have something that you can go online and scan and print off so that you could have it on site so that I could take a picture? Like, say I have a tool talk in the morning. Take a picture, send it to you. Get receipts daily. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <you>. Excuse me. <laughs> Um, I was just watching Carlito waiting to sneeze, building. and I'm like, building, yeah. just sneeze, man. <laughs> it just doesn't come out like that. It doesn't, it doesn't. Um, so I could take a picture receipt as I go to Home Depot, go click, send to Kate. That, you don't Kate's ha- amazing, you, by you, the way. I don't even Kate, know her, but Kate, I like her. Kate, our office manager, a huge shout out to Kate. Without Kate, this business wouldn't be off the ground. Can I ask right you now. your hours? So, so I'll, I'll speak for myself. I... I'm not Manny. I work 12 to 16 hours a day. I don't work intelligent like him. I work like a meathead. Yeah. You know, I work smart, but I'm putting in lots and lots of hours in construction on the tools. At seven o'clock when I get off from one job and then I'm going to another, is Kate available? Kate's always available. Wow. Kate's always available. Is Kate and single? If, <laughs> no, she's not. She's, well, she's stay available. Away that was the stay joke. Away from that Kate. was the joke. We're that wrestling joke. If, you, if you touch Kate. <laughs> uh, By the way, that was Carlito and not Manny. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. <laughs> jokes, jokes, jokes. <laughs> I'm looking at this long list. So, I mean, okay, bookkeeping. You've got, you know, expense classification, receipt classification, weekly mm-hmm. payable, financial reporting, invoice creation, payroll remittance, WSIB premiums, payment reminders. Then you're doing human resources, right? So you're doing new employee package. So you're yes. getting ready for like, how do we speak to them? Instead of, will you show up? Will you show we, up? We have employee contracts. That's, employee that's, contracts. We have employee contracts. I was contracts. just being asked this the other day in a DM asking for my version of it. And I'm like, I'm mm. reworking mine. That you got time tracking, you got customized contracts, subcontractor forms, employee handbook. Yes. How to speak to your employees. Which is very important. You you, you as a business operate different from what Manny, what I, Everybody and, and every, does. Every operates, everyone op- operates different. 
we're going to critique your handbook so that it fits your business. And everything is online and it's available to you at any time. It's all cloud-based. And, and then you got hiring support, ROI filing support, certificate, uh, certification uh, tracking. You got crew safety briefings. You got parking ticket payment. Oh, listen. How many parking tickets do you guys get? Well, you get a lot, but you're you kinda, brilliant. I'm yeah, going to start uh, with that. This is brilliant. I'm looking. I'm looking at this, and I can't. believe... So John's given us a piece of paper outlining everything he does. Yeah, this is brilliant. Like you've got, you got almost everything covered here. My question for you is: Do you have something for the company owner to give retirement savings package or benefits? Also, I was getting is that something that you supply. Too. Ooh, no. Because I, I really... You so should be adding that. Because I really, I, let, me, let me just finish the list here because this list is still sorry. going on. Educational materials, marketing campaigns, course coordinating, email drafting, real-time job costing, and more. And I definitely agree with Carlito that and more should be re retirement. Like, like that, We're big on yeah, that. You we, know what? That's huge. That's, because not a lot of guys are building for the future. And like like you said. And that's why we're here, right? Our bodies are, have so many decades it's in a them. ticking clock. Right? So it's like we know that we're going to have to stop doing this physical labor at some mm. point. And we could either be that joker who doesn't care about doing anything. And we just keep on running the jobs and just making all the young guys do all the work. Yeah. Or we can actually, you know, plan for the future and get out of it when we're happy. And then do our own thing. So it's like that that should be added to your list as well. You know what? But this list is insane, man. No, it is. That's interesting. This is amazing. I wish you would have shown me this 10 years ago uh, myself i'm creating my wish list this is like okay if i wanted to really scale up and really just stay on the tools and build cool shit this is what i need to you know what for christmas i'm gonna send you my receipts <laughs> <laughs> send them to kate not me god damn i don't kate, want them i'm calling you <laughs> after not seven him. you don't send it to him right no but you know what i love this because it was always so hard and difficult to start a business you know, I'm going back 35 years. We didn't have these technologies. No, man. You know, no. we had to go to mm -hmm. a hard phone on a cord and put quarters in, yeah. dimes and nickels, and <laughs> make calls. People didn't answer. There was no answering machines. Did like, you live in a phone booth? Pretty like, much. Super, super pretty man? much. <laughs> <laughs> I ate in phone booths. I'm still waiting, guys. No. <laughs> but it's it's a different world now, so you might as well. And I, I love that you keep on saying that you sub it out, man. So why can't yeah. you sub? Like, you should be subbing this out. Absolutely. 100% you should be subbing because it out. This isn't my passion. Dude, I hate this paperwork shit. And, and it's I can't not stand it, we're, man. We're, we're building. We, we build shit. Yes. We, we like to play so, on tools. Yeah. So let someone else do what they're good at. Exactly. You're not going to ask. So if, you're, if your client, who happens to be a bookkeeper, says, hmm, yeah, you know, I could, I could be on the, I could be one of your employees if you'd like. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll work for a decent wage. But, yeah, I could really help out. Maybe keep, some, keep the job down. What do you say? No. You're not no, going no, to no. do that. So I hire my accountant to do this. But now that I see this, I really want to try this. So I don't like we need to talk because yeah. I want to somehow figure out how to how do I how go does it about work? How, doing does it, this? how do we start? So we go online and we start. Go to our website. What's, has, the, what's the URL? Craftandclerk.com. Yeah. Craft and so clerk craft com. and and the word and not to the symbol and that's uh, correct clerk yeah. com. it's all on there it's all online there it's all online our website is uh is up and running it's still you know it still needs work we're moving and shaking right now and how long you guys been doing this now months okay so you just got started we, listen we just we just registered the business name we just got our business cards this week this is well thought out we're, what's we're, the, what's we're the feedback now. what's the feedback so far so you've got a few contractors that are on there right now working on it yeah what's the feedback i got a text the other day saying like you know and i'm always busting guys balls because it's like i want them to use this service right a lot of guys they, ha they have it and like i haven't had time to do it so i'm i'm busting their balls it's the 13th hey you do your payroll remains. 14th. You're constantly you. doing those fr friendly reminders, right? No, no, just to just That's from the most me, important part just from me to, to my to my buddies who are who are contractors and are on this service. It's now the 15th. Did you do it? I've actually did it on the 15th. This is the first time. I will show you the text. Good for message you. So you're Dylan. bettering people. Buddy, thank you. This is the first time I've done my my payroll remittance online. But the it, first time. It, isn't it ironic that most contractors are saying, I don't have the fucking time or to the money. This. I don't have the time or the money I need to for do this. Service. But but here's the question for you is like when you get started working out, 
What's the hardest part、mm. where you see no change whatsoever? It's the very beginning. Yeah. But you know that after you get that hump, you go over that hump,、yeah. you're going to have more energy and you're going to actually feel better.、That's、so、right. it's like, it's the same thing with this is that once you get started, it's going to be a pain in the ass in the beginning to all of a sudden have this nagging head telling it, okay,、yeah. did you do this? Did you do that? Did、Remind、you get your boys、right? well, to sign well, in in the morning? Let's、know? talk about what the most stressful part about construction is. Or running a business. That's juggling. There's only one? That's juggling. No, there's many. Juggling money can stress you out. Oh, and man. It can affect your health, your、yeah. relationships,、yeah. with friends, family. So if you s- do this, at least you'll know what your budget realistically is at the, every month,、yeah. every week. You know where your profits are. You, you know you're caught up to H. You don't have these ghosts in the closet haunting yeah, you every、so、day, stressing the, you that's out. That's part of the financial reporting. So, when the job is done, you're actually giving the contractor an assessment of what the job went.、Yep. So, basically, labor wise, material wise, job wise, profit wise, which is the most important part. Which is really important because that's what runs a business, right?、Yep. So, you're letting us know. Did we do well? Did we not do well? Where did we learn?、What、Where did, did we make do mistakes?、Right. The original idea for Craft and Clerk is to have like a, a community, open up the conversations. Like, how do you guys do it? If you guys have any, any information that you want on here, any services like retirement fund, yes, this is our wish list. This is co- a contractor's wish list. Let's do it. Let's implement it. Let's make it happen. You want something on here, we'll do it in a, in a drop of a hat. Shoot us a text. Give us an email, give us a call. We'll make it happen. We're trying to, we're building the, the contractor wish list. I love thinking outside of the box. This is a great list, do you, man. Do you, okay, so for me, I really always keep going down to the dumb down. And I'm one of those guys that I need someone to hold my hand.、Mm-hmm. I'm not good on computers. That's、well, why I, walks. Man, <laughs> Manny walks on the beach with a cat.、Um, no, with a no, cat? I'm, I don't own a cat. I don't like cats. You know, I'm a one, dog one person. Thing, <laughs> And I don't walk along the beach, man. He's actually a bird person. Again, Carlito with the lies. <laughs>、um, so, one of, my, one of my strong points is, is that I can manipulate or take someone that's already educated in something and make them do something for me. I have people helping me with computer work because that's my weakness.、Yep. For me, like, it's really important. For How this easy to be, is it going to be for yeah, a guy like him? Like, that's the most important selling feature for me. So, the idea with this business is we're not, we're not developing any software, any app. We're not reinventing the wheel. We're using existing apps that you probably already have. We're just really good at them. This is our specialty. Just like a tile guy is a master tile setter, this is our specialty. This is a, a decade of experience, and this is feedback from other people. This is the wish list. It's not like you have to log in and, and you know, break down your spreadsheet. We do the work for you. You give us chicken scratch, we can put it into. Into,、uh, I, I love、okay, that you,、so、you keep saying chicken scratch right? because you know the majority of contractors are going to write it on a piece of two by four and fucking、yeah. take a picture of it、yeah. and send it to you. They may even send you the two by four. <laughs> hey, do you, times, time, take, do you know how many times I've taken a two by four to Tim Hortons? That's what I mean. Yeah, down that's the what、list. I mean, man.、Yeah. It's, it's, as, it's as easy as you need it to be. I now am listening on the Construction Life podcast. I'm interested in doing、mm-hmm. this. I'm going to go to the website. You go to our website. You can go to our Instagram.、Uh, If I don't want to go to the website, can I call someone? Absolutely. Okay. And what's that number? 416 801 You're o n e n i going to speak directly with either Kate, Kate. Or, or Juliana. <laughs> That's correct.、Uh, you can also email us、uh, hello at craftandclerk.com. Okay. And then so, what's the Instagram handle? It's, it's craftandclerk. Craftandclerk. Craft、yeah. Then it's the, it's the word and, not the symbol and.、Uh, with Instagram? No, I think it is. The, oh, it's the symbol? Yeah. Okay. Symbol. Cool. Are there any set costs already developed? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's evolving. Like we're going up and we're going down. So, right now we have three tiers, and that tier, like the more of the monthly fee, the more services you're going to get. Okay. So, what I really do like about what you're doing here is for me, it was very important. Very, being an old school guy, I would take a receipt from Home Depot, say, example, or you know, Mississauga Hardware, and I would take that receipt and I'd photocopy it. It would go into a file and take a picture of it on your phone. Yeah. yeah. Well, You know how to do I'm that. I'm just starting to learn how to do that. So I'd photocopy it and I'd leave it in my file and then I'd、yeah. take the main receipt, I'd put it away. People can keep their receipts so they actually have that for their accountant and they can still you know, have a second source of information if they ever need to the, find something. There's a digital copy. Can I call you and retrieve that if、of、I'm、course. missing it? Of course. 
Yeah, it's all wow. it's all, well, it's it's all, all part of it's it, all right? Yeah. So it's already a part of the whole reporting process, right? I know. So I just I just find that very important because it is. guys like me lose that stuff so fast, and it's like, a lot yeah. easier to do it on a daily basis than it is to wait at the end it's, of the week. It's mandatory to do it as you're as you're buying. Sometimes in line, I'll step out five feet. And I'll take a picture of it, and that's it. Well, the like, interesting thing is that when I got started on social media, I was posting three times a day, and it was stupid, right? Mm. Like, I was doing 21 posts a week, and it was insane. And yeah. I just started to myself, well, how can I make this happen? And then I quickly realized that you've got all these little pockets of windows, like these right. little time windows, when you, unfortunately, go to the bathroom, yeah. order something, standing yeah. in line, stuff like that, right? So those are little windows that you have all these, and that's the same thing with you guys, where you're standing in line, you're, you're doing something else, or you're maybe sitting in traffic, or you're parked or whatever, you can actually send a text, send a picture, send an so email and then you guys get the information you guys constantly do it on a thing on a daily basis daily basis. morning noon and night send this information to you guys yes. it's out of my head as a contractor it's now in your head and you're putting it together for my package for that job and we do this for every single job every single then at the end of the job. job you guys give me a final report mm-hmm. And it just looks magical. It looks organized and it looks like... If you know where you stand. Yeah. Does, and that's presentable to your accountant. Like Correct. I could take that and say, here. Well, you're putting it in the QuickBooks so you can take it's, that. It's, all, it's already in QuickBooks. You take a picture of it with the QuickBooks app. It, it goes to your to your QuickBooks account. We reconcile it. So we put it where it needs to be. So okay, here's brilliant. the really... If you give us, if you give us uh, you know, receipts for, for shoes... Or the Zanzibar. No, 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 no. I like this guy. No, no, no. You, you guys, you guys will flag that, of we're, course. We're, we're gonna say, hey, Carlito. No one flags. This is Zanzibar. the fourth time this week at the Zanzibar. Okay. <laughs> For everybody who doesn't know, or, Zanzibar or re- is an adult entertainment or how about, facility. How about really scary Fillmore's? Oh, the oh, the Fillmore's. <laughs> the Walking Dead. We'll burn that receipt. <laughs> Where the Polaroids don't necessarily um, look like the people. So, <laughs> really important question is how much time are you going to save one of the listeners in their business weekly? It's as much as you want. So you can make it as much as you want. That time that you save, you can do a course and learn how to crochet. You can spend time with your Whoa. family. You can, you can, <laughs> you can, you can take it while we're doing this. You can take a course on accounting and you know that now you have time to, I don't want to do that too. What you never know. No, but you should be putting time. You have that option. So, no. what, but what you're doing is you're giving everyone a tool to focus on their business and right. their marketing for their business and right. allow. No, I meant that I don't want to do it. I want you guys to do it. I don't want to take. Th- I, yeah, I agree with you. Listen, I can learn how to play a musical instrument. I can learn how to right. brick you lay play a the flute. Hole. I'm just no, I do not play the flute. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you play the flute. But the thing is, I don't want to do that. My interests and my passions are elsewhere. So I rather like I love key that you keep on saying that you sub it out. Because sub this is out, something man. that you have to sub out. This you, is another subtrade. You have to think of it as a subtrade. This is a totally another subtrade. Can I ask you something? Now that you're so proficient at this and you've figured out an excellent routine and you have a team, I'm a new guy in the business. I'm a youngster, 20 years old. I just came out of college or mm-hmm. university. You wish. <laughs> I do, actually. <laughs> um, and I'm now realizing this is important and i'm going to start the proper way with your recommendations of yep. you taking care do you have an accountant do you have people that you can refer that oh, work wait. with you already wait. so we yeah. have we have a network we have a network and it's only getting bigger so each new client every month every week it's getting larger and larger because that's a question that's asked all the time on so, job sites right. so i can open up a business now i can call you ask to talk to kate mm-hmm. and she can basically get me fully going for a business put, put you in the right direction we have a protocol that we fo- that we follow through with craft and clerk every day we go through it who's got a truck payment coming up let's make sure there's enough money in there Let's make sure that uh, there's invoices outstanding that they get paid. Let's see if their uh, books are, are reconciled for this week. We have, we have a checklist of every business. We log out of Stone's Throw. We log into Hardcore Renos. We do the same thing. It's daily. It's proactive. So all of these are important, equally important. Mm-hmm. To the listeners starting a business or just started a business, doesn't matter what age they are, What's the most important part right now? Start on the right foot, man. Start don't, both, don't, dude. Don't get caught up in like, oh, I'm too small for this, and this isn't really going to... Look, we have, we have a, a lower tier that doesn't offer a lot, but just enough. 
right? So to where, does it, where does the lower tier start and how high can it get? I think it's like four something a month. It's all month month, month to month for something. And it goes up to, you know, seventeen, eighteen hundred dollars a month. Got it. And pick and choose, you know, you can start at one and work your way up or, you know, it's. What's the so, difference between the two, like the, the different tier programs? Just the level of service. That's all it is. How right? many employees and so on? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I exactly. think it's important because I've always said this is that like when guys start out on their own, because every guy that's worked as a laborer and they mm-hmm. want to eventually go on their own, as much passion and effort you put into building, put it into this paperwork. Please. please. You have to. You, you have to be a sponge on site and in the back office. If Kate's doing something, Kate, why are you doing this? Well, if you do not, here's your repercussions, right? You, you have to understand. We're not a business that's going to going to run things for you. We're helping you. We're, we're a tool and you need to utilize that tool properly. You have to be in the loop. Now that we have an established network, it's like the, the, the information and the tricks of the trade are going back and forth. It's, it's, it's well, beautiful. Let, let's it's face so it. Cool. But this business is changing. It is. Yeah. You know, in a, oh, it's it, about time. But this is yeah, really we're like, a I'm sorry. It's about five, I've only been in the business 10 years <laughs> and I've seen it dramatically change in 10 years. Yeah. It, it, we should be 20 years ahead. Yep. I'm well, sorry to say, but we I should be. I just think a lot of people are comfortable working for cash and not paying by WSIB the way. We and, do not fuck with cash. You Everyone, can't because how do you come to us and saying, like, uh, yeah, 90% cash? Well, ninety percent cash. Need to, you need to get your shit together and then come to us, please. Don't be working for cash all the time. You, you can't, can't do that, dude. It's so well. We all know the problem going outside of what we were talking about with you. People would rather pay someone cash and not pay the HST or the WSIB right. until yeah. someone gets hurt or uh, something goes wrong, or you can't get paid because you don't have valid e clearance. Yeah, by a, you know by a contractor or, or yeah. Or someone yeah, like some that. guy walks up to you and says, "Hey, what's going on over here?" And all of a fun, and all of a sudden, you find out he's a health minister or yeah, health minister. We have the health minister. Health minister. <laughs> the it's health like a safety. Barrel. You have the safety wrap. The, the health or minister from Croatia. <laughs> okay, drop your pants. <laughs> I come to you hard. <laughs> Looks like you have grenade. <laughs> and the pants in the front. <laughs> I love you, John. We're hanging out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is really this is so important. I think that everyone should really take a good listen to this and give you a call and like for me, I would be calling your phone number because I le- I'm a talker obviously. I love listening to myself. Yeah, so. not a tech guy. And I love interrupting. And he's, 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 your, he's, he's basically your demographic. The majority yeah. of guys out there, he's not heavily tech influenced and not using, you can only use the apps that he can use on a phone. And that's fine. Which is fine. But then you guys are offering a phone number. Once again, the phone number is what? 416-801-9929. That's correct. And then the email is hello at craftandclerk.com. And then the website is craftandclerk.com. And then and the uh, Instagram. You guys are also on any other social platforms? We're on uh, Facebook and Twitter as well. It's the same thing, right? Yeah. Clapped. Okay. Clapped uh, totally cool, man. Can yeah. I can I ask you, like, for you to so put this together so well, you must have lost some money and some time. Oh, of course, my God. man. You've never. So Listen. tell me, tell me some stories about you, like and, this. Well, like I said, these are solutions to my problems. Now, as a small business, we don't. We don't have the ability or the bankroll to have a full-time accountant, full-time bookkeeper, full-time administrative assistant. We don't have that budget. If you're looking, if you're saying, well, maybe Craft and Clerk is a little too expensive for me. I'm not sure if I can do that. Think, of, maybe I'll bring in a part-time administrative assistant, right? What that would cost. What, what is that going to cost? And at the end of the day, this part-time person is only going to be reactive. She's going to come in on Monday. She's going to deal with last week's shit. She's not going to give you those, those She's not going little to give triggers. You those reminders. That she's not going to reminders. No. She's not going to be aware and of And you're going to have to take the time to set this person up. You're going to have to get all of this information to hand off to her. This is what I need done. And then you're going to have to talk her through it. What's the system? Is that? What's the password to this account and this and that? So you're going to have to put time You guys are already that. all set up for that. We're set up. We're well, going to tell you what to do. We're how, going to tell you how to, how to operate. This is more important than owning a truck for your business. And it I is. think people should not be intimidated or afraid of spending that money for more than one reason. First of all, okay, don't look at the numbers because the numbers are saving you time and money, mm-hmm. making you, allowing you to do the things that you need to do in life, work hard and play hard. Two, this is a write-off. 
Exactly. I know people don't like write-offs. I love write-offs. You know, you this can be an easy write-off. You actually make more money at the end of the year. Don't look at it yep. now and say, oh, this is how much it costs. You know what? Look at it. At the end of the year, I wrote that off. I just made more money. Exactly. Because I spent into my money, into well, my business. Well, because you're operating your business more efficiently. And you're able to scale up. If you want to grow your business, how are you going to grow? Maybe you, you took a course and you know how to uh, install tile better. or You know how to frame and you're going to want to scale up your business. You can't scale up with an anchor behind you, no. right? Because no. your back office, your office, the business side of your business is not going to keep up with you. And so, it won't grow with you. It won't grow. And you cannot grow. You what else do you want to tell up. us? Because well, we got to wrap this up, Carlito. How do, I, how, do I, how do I get my businesses or my sub trades involved in being part of my paperwork with you? Oh, so we have. We as soon have, as you log in. We, yeah, exactly. We have Form 100s that your subcontractors have to fill out. We make sure that your subcontractors have a valid WSIB. So you yes. guys have all the documentation already all, all set the, up as soon as you log in, a, in. That used to be in a job box. Like, I have a job box. Oh, no, man. Dude, it's 2019 now. I know, but this is still realistic that you need to have this on site. And yes, it's nice to have it on an iPhone or Samsung or whatever you but use. But every contractor I know has a smartphone. Yeah. Yeah, but I still Every, have I still have one. hardscape papers. I'm still transitioning to technology. I'm an old school guy. Speak with Kate. She'll she'll hook you up. I'm a meathead stonemason. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. That's, okay, that, that's so the demographic. A couple we quick want. questions. It always couple gets to this quick point. Questions. I could talk to you forever. <laughs> yeah, and we'll do it. Let's and, do it. And an hour is just not enough. I agree. Um, Try an hour and a half. What do you hate about the construction industry? What's the first thing that pops? The first thing that pops into my head are those I don't feel meatheads, man. After I've uh, started my business in the beginning, I still had to work with people in the in the wintertime. Had to hop on a masonry crew and just to pay the bills because it wouldn't it wouldn't go 12 months out of the year. I would be pulling my fucking hair out every single day because I'm dealing with these animals. You can't interact, you can't have a conversation with these guys. The industry needs to change in the sense that we need to have a different mentality on site. We need to have a different breed of per, uh, of people coming What was in. the reason? Like, what was it that you would have a conversation asking them to try something new? Or they just... They have that mentality of their mind isn't open to new ideas, you know? Like, it's true. hey, I'm coming in from, uh, you know, from the same field, a different business. I'm an employee now. This looks a little off. This could be, you know, this is information coming from the outside. Like, I'm not busting your balls here, trying to belittle you. I'm saying this could be fixed and this could be better. But they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They just refuse to hear it. It's unfortunate, man. What's so, the next question? So, you know, me and we're all like on the same page. We're all interconnected now you mm -hmm. know we're trying to make a difference in this industry bring awareness more yeah. ammunition for people to get jobs uh better themselves for the future uh we talk about retirement every single episode mm. my next question is what do you recommend for people in construction so that they have something in the long run if they i keep telling people real estate because that's yeah. really I, well, it's, it's, I don't see people investing into anything. Come up with a plan for what do you recommend income, for you you contractors to, or, or laborers. You have to start way, way before that. Just daily money management. Don't drop twenty bucks a day on the coffee truck on a fucking two no, meatball sandwich. No, don't show up on uh, at the oh, job site with a five dollar Starbucks and then don't go to Starbucks or Tim Hortons daily and buy a sandwich management. for a brekkie business and Bring then a fucking cooler. Then, Bring a thermos. Then, then don't go to a fast food place and get your lunch and then daily by the money end of the day you spend forty dollars. Start from start from the bottom. Start, okay. start from start from square one. Make your lunch. Up. Bring your own coffee from home. Yeah. In a travel mug. Yeah. Start yeah. saving a bunch of money. Save the sea turtles. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> the don't. Totally. No. Listen. I, I just bought my very first metal straw the other day. For real. You know what? I'm ahead of you. Don't fall on it. Serious? Nah. We've had <laughs> we've had metal straws. We've gone to bamboo. Oh. Shampoo. And pretty soon it's gonna be a hemp baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's another question for you because Manny's gonna cut you me off. You said two. <laughs> yeah, I didn't third say when question. I was gonna start. Man, I didn't say when the second question was gonna start. <laughs> um, what can what kind of information or what kind of advice or motivation inspiring someone coming out of school right now or someone young already in this business? How can they get a job in this industry and what kind of attitude do they need? I've never once given a resume to anybody. I've walked on site. I've called them. I've, 
You can walk on site on any job site with with some. Boots. But you're handsome. It's totally different. Nah, I, you, you can't get by in your looks. You, <laughs> yes, you have you to can. have some skill in the right <laughs> attitude. Yeah, you true. can get a job at anywhere, and you, everyone is looking. Yeah, what's your biggest problem? Labor. Finding good guys. Have a, an open mind in the sense that like, there's a technique to sweeping up. There is. There's a technique. Not to sweeping one arm, up. two. Dude, you know, the, <laughs> not the, two guys, one. <laughs> when, when, when a manager is like is like micromanaging, like no, 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 don't put that there, because there's a thought process that maybe you're not aware of yet, because that something's going to go there in in Adapt. a day or two, right? Like, hmm, maybe you, that you brought is. up a really valid point, man. I don't think I've ever asked for a resume from any contractor, subcontractor, person that I've worked for. No, no because you interrogate nobody. them. No, I don't interrogate them. Yeah, you them. interrogate them. You when meet you them. You talk to them on the phone. You <laughs> yeah. see if you click. You meet them on the job site. Then you see if you click. But listen, we're we're a pure sport. Yeah, we're pure in the sense that you can't bullshit. You know what? You probably the said something will come off. You said totally. something really brilliant. What? We are a sport. This we're is pure. a team sport. This is a team. Yeah, if we don't sport. get along together, our team's not going to win. Your team is Great your point. business. Your team is your. I'm going to carry that. He's going to use it now. I hope you haven't trained. Okay, so it. so two more <laughs> questions. <laughs> <laughs> Two more questions. No. Okay. Keep so going. Go, one, go one thing you said earlier on, and it always sticks with me because I love the word. I want you to say perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Because that's what you said earlier. You said it has to be perfect. And I love to. that you said that. And I want people to, to remember that you're making things perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Always. Work. Always. To work. I just wanted to hear perfection. him say it because he said it a few times and, and it stuck out to me that you're passionate, that you really want to change people's businesses definitely, and their lives. This is more than just the business. It's, so, it's more. We're, we're all a family. Guys. You know? Yeah. Don't be afraid to spend this money. This you is the cannot. best money spent. You're leaving a lot of money on the table by not having the knowledge, not, not having thinking the, about not it. having the yeah, putting it in the back burner. You're losing so much money, and you cannot scale up. You'll never scale up. Okay, so these are the last two questions. <laughs> Where do you see your business going in the future? Uh, which one? Both. For Stone's Throw, I don't think I want to be this 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 big huge company with all these guys. I've been to the cusp, and I like niche and custom. I like having a small team where it's like we know what's going on each day and just having more interesting jobs. Think like outside of the box. We're not really a production. How company. many guys you got on the crew? Right now it's only Robbie and I. Really? Yeah. So this summer we had, I think, six guys. Some of them went to school, some of them got fired, some of them went here and there. But we scaled up. We had a lot of work, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and as it's winding down, like I said, we're at the trim stage now. So now you're doing, you, are you still doing the mason? You're still doing the landscaping, but you're focusing more on the construction? We're, we're still doing everything. Uh, it's like, if I could just play with rocks all day, man, that'd be a, a pretty good life. Right? What's the but website? Stonethrowconstruction.com. And then the handles are on this? Uh, yeah, everything is Stone's Throw Construction on Instagram and Facebook. What's the area that you typically like to work? In the GTA, in, in like the core Toronto proper. So we usually jump from like the beaches to Etobicoke, beaches to nice. Etobicoke. Nice. Right. I'm going to have to grab some cards off you. What so is my last, your my final last, question? My final question <laughs> for this dun, podcast. Dun, dun, for this one. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> What do you like to do in your personal time? I have too many. Uh, what does John have, do? What is? The, what? I have too many hobbies, and I think I think but that's important one. though. So I it love, tells me who you are as a character. I love, I love to sail. I have a boat. Wow. Uh, I love to sail. Sailing's not a, a rich person sport anymore. There, people are giving away boats, and it's they such, are. It's such a lifestyle that is. What is, kind of boat you got? CNC thirty six frigate. Yeah, just bought it. I had a Catalina. It was given to me. Yeah. Oh, but uh, oh, unfortunately, someone stole my extension cord. It flooded when I came back after the winter. Uh -huh. It was completely saturated. Wood was destroyed. It broke my heart. Uh, yeah. where, where is it now? I gave it away. Next home. We'll I sailed my first boat in England, in Wales. You're in our hood, so you need to. Uh, we need to go sailing. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. This was amazing. I hope you guys pay attention to this and try it out. Just check it out. Go check online. It out. Yeah. Check it Best out Best money sure. you're going to spend and the most time uh, left for yourself to enjoy the rest of your life because yeah. what youngsters don't know is that time creeps up on you really fast so and you don't fast. you don't want to keeps on creeping no ticking ticking <laughs> thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> anyways this All is right. amazing thank you so Ready? much john this has been educational man so uh, please everyone check it out check out the website check out the information it's worth a checkout it's worth a discussion and definitely give kate 
Uh, we want to give a huge Kate. shout out to I, Kate. I, I love Kate. Shout Kate, out. a call and ask Big her as many questions about this as possible and learn more about it and make your business better. And call after seven. No, <laughs> call after no, seven. no. Take us out of here. Thank you, John, for joining the show on an early morning. Thank you. We guys. really appreciate. it. Straight out of T.O. baby, four one six. Yeah, 